Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back on this Tuesday Night Live. Hey, sorry we didn't get a show in last week. Um, I was a little busy. We got done with our uh, registration meeting back in Oklahoma, and I had to retie leaders and retie everything uh, for the first day of the Bassmaster Kayak National Championship. So that's why we didn't do it last week. We're here this week. This is going to be a good one. So grab a drink, settle down. We've got, uh, first off, we're talking with Marv. Mr. Mobbing Outdoors, all things uh, native no limit power hour coming up in uh, like two weeks. And then we've got um, the other three hooligans that travel with me back to Oklahoma, uh, Damian, uh, Anthony Garcia, and Sean Beach. Kong did go, but he's working tonight, so he can't join us. First things first, a lot of you guys have probably heard, but there is a second headwaters location in Rancho Cordova. Um, the old California Canoe and Kayak off Folsom Boulevard and Highway 50 is now flying the Headwaters Adventure Company banner and logo. They are open right now under Headwaters. They are having a grand opening on April 13th. Head down to the shop and uh, there will be some in-person deals on some select few things that you guys aren't going to want to miss out. And also, Brian will be at the Reading um, Outdoor Expo April 6th and 7th. So uh, make sure you stop by and see him at that his booth up there. Make sure you come down to the Rancho Cordova shop or, you know, visit the OG Reading shop. So they had a Brian up in Reading. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to bring on Marv. Um, Marv, I know you got short for time a little bit. I appreciate you jumping on, talking about um, – the native now i'm super stoked for this tournament i have not got to fish one yet fingers crossed that i get a bit time off from work to fish this one because i definitely don't want to miss out um hey thanks so, for having me thanks for having yeah, man. me thanks for coming yeah. on hey john thanks for having me you bet. it's that exciting time of the year and guys um we were at clear lake this year On previous years we had at lake Berryessa. The year after that, we had it at New Malones, and this year we are at the Bass Factory. So That's right. super excited. We I got a permit for just us, so we're the only event that's going to be holding an, uh, a fishing tournament at that lake. We got it just for ourselves, and Dude, I'm super awesome. excited to bring this to you guys. And hey, let's show the rest of the nation what our community can do out here let's let's bring yep. back another um heavy hitter uh attendance guys we had 184 last year 82 182 yeah could have been 183 but i was stuck working oh so guys all right that was for new maloney's all right we're going to the bass factory clear lake mm -hmm. it's april fish are probably going to be shallow just saying who knows i've been there since last september but this time of year at Clear Lake, we can't miss out. It's right, right. Fun. And I don't know if you guys have seen the bags that we've been pulling out there. I know John's been paying attention to the bags that are pulling oh, yeah. out there. They are right, humongous. I yeah. mean, the winning bags are over 30 pounds plus. Yes. So it's yeah. going to be high, pros, high 20s pros don't got, get too much. No. Uh, John Pearl and, a, and one of his clients has uh, hooked a uh, 10 pounder, I think, last weekend. Yeah. Wow. I think it was. So they're a big fish too, I guess. So yeah, that being said, what's the date? What's the time? And where are we launching, Marv? So let's talk about the whole itinerary. Okay. Uh, obviously, the um, the tournament is April 6th, but April 5th is more likely a lot of people's pre fishing date. Um, there's no regulations on uh, off limits for uh, pre fishing other than get off the water by 5 p.m the day before the tournament and after uh, at 5 p.m to 7 p.m um, Dave from Clear Lake Outdoors is kind enough to host a social event for everybody that's going to be going to the tournament and visit his shop he's gonna be catering some food he's gonna be throwing a raffle for every registered uh, angler out there everybody gets a ticket if you want to buy tickets um, he's gonna be throwing some prizes out there he's also gonna be working with some companies out there uh, that that he, he supports his store to throw some um, baits into the mix. So, hey, Dave Burris from Clear Lake Outdoors, I appreciate you doing this for the community. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, and I'm going to be using that place to uh, conduct uh, a, a, a social area for people to answer questions and I can answer, uh, help out uh, 
the people are, are, are jumping in. And um, around 6.30, around that time, I'm going to be conducting a live captain's meeting for everybody on Facebook. So if you're going to be out there, hey, let's go have some dog talk out there. Uh, pick up some last-minute baits from Clear Lake Outdoors. And, you know, grab a bite to beat. Uh, eat, grab a bite to eat because um, Dave is going to be catering some food out there. So, hey, big props to Dave out there. That's um, awesome. Then the following morning, hey, we're, we're going to have our tournament. Um, every, we have approved launches. I know there's some public on launches that are not, not listed. Um, we're sticking with the list we have right now. So if you go on the registration page, you can see what the approved launches are, okay? And before you guys launch off, I'm going to go on Facebook Live again to send everybody off. I do plan to um, say a little uh, things for before sending, it, uh, sending people out there and maybe play, you know, the national anthem. And then right after the national anthem, um, we'll send everybody off, okay? Uh, follow Wait. the times are on the registration page. And then when everybody is, you know, out there, hey, fish safe, follow the rules, and good luck. Um, there's no out of bounds this, area. Wait, go ahead, James. Is it all through Tourney X, Morph? Yeah, right? Everything's all through Tourney X. Everything's Perfect. all through Tourney X. Okay. Make sure you update your uh your software because a lot of changes have been um popping off since. If you haven't fished a tournament all year, you need to update your Tourney X. And hey, the changes are great. So yeah, um, if you, let me uh your Tourney X doesn't look like doesn't look like this. Right. Update it. If you got the old version, it doesn't look like this. Make sure you update it. Dwayne did an awesome job updating it, and it's a yes. lot more intuitive now. And I really appreciate what he's doing uh, for our community out there. It it works. It's solid. And submitting Heck a fish yeah. is a lot more easier now. I would recommend using the app for your photos and everything on this. This is gonna get messy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're gonna have hopefully a ton of fish to submit so if you guys aren't using the app for photos in between fish snap a photo of the front deck of your kayak your foot oh, something <laughs> something to separate the fish from the yes. fish from the fish because we're going to have hundreds of fish pictures by the time this yes. is all over and said and done with so make sure you guys do that it's going to be time management getting everything submitted and then that way you can get a count of how many fish you have our managed catch is still going to be the five in there or is that Different so we're gonna one. you're gonna see the first 17 fishes um on there because that's what tourney x can only show but we're counting every okay. inches in there uh yeah. the fishing format is no limit um catch a scoreable fish is 14 inch or bigger but i doubt you're gonna catch anything less than 15 inches out there at least um keep scoring your fish and as james said break up your your photo somehow because it's going to be messy. You have to try to figure out how many fishes you caught and which one fish because you're going to be snapping multiple fish, uh, photos of your fish to make sure you get it right. So figure out a way to break up your uh, your pictures. Um, James said take a picture of your deck. Someone told me to take a picture of the sky. Uh, I know some people are actually creating a small um, dry erase board so that way they can count. There you go. That's yeah, I used one. to snap a picture, picture of the, the front deck of my kayak, the bow, yeah. something to just – you know, something yep. to, to break it up because yeah. I didn't do one that picture, last week. Yeah, put one picture in a folder or, or like your favorites. Clear out your favorites. And yeah. then when you take that photo, just put it in your favorites. There and you then yeah. every one photo you have, that's that's going to be a picture that you want to submit. Or put it in the but, live well. Yeah. You could put it in the live well as well. And then just leave it in there and you could submit them later or submit them as you go. You might want to mm -hmm. submit them as you go so you know they're going in. You know, I have yep. to stress over it. Okay, so, so what's, this, uh, go ahead. back to our itinerary. What time is the projected launch? Oh, that okay. <laughs> I, dude, let me take I guess look. I could have pulled right. it up on turn. Yeah, X. I should have pulled it My up. My bad, dude. <laughs> no, no. So, okay, launch what? time is uh, 5.45 a.m., okay? But I'm going to get on Facebook Live around maybe 5.40, 5.35, you know? So pull up your Facebook uh, page, uh, add me as your friend, and I'll send a link out there because I'm going to live. And then at 45, I'll send you guys off. Um, okay. It would be nice for everybody to pull it up so that way you can pull up and uh, put it on speakerphone and everybody just have like a little, you know, send off a little launch area at, at the launch. Um, lines in at 615. Um, safe 
uh, light comes up at 647. So if you have a motorized kayak, uh, make sure you have flags, your 360 light, and um, you're following the boating rules over there. Uh, make yeah, sure you have navigation nice. lights. Okay. 360 yeah, light, guys, is for all of us. Yeah. Every and single one of us has to have a 360 light. Mm -hmm. Nav and lights for us to have yeah. motors. Yep. Okay. Um, lines out. Last photo is at 2.14.59 seconds. And you guys know why we're, glad we're you doing specified that. specified that. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, a lot of fish are being caught. And we were going to make sure that we're getting it down to the second. Okay. Yep. Um, last photo submission is at 3.15. And the awards is at 415. Now, the awards, nice. it's going to be at the Kanoktai Vista Casino. Okay. Uh, I've already posted it, posted it up there where the location is on Tourney X, and you'll find the address. Uh, where on the casino? I'm still working out those, those details. Uh, we have okay. some retailers that's going to be uh, showcasing their stuff. Okay. Uh, we have a trailer company, we have, we have Kite City. And um, if anybody wants to showcase their stuff out there, you know, let me know. We'll, we'll set we'll set up a, a pad for you to go ahead and showcase your stuff. But um, yeah, after that, we'll go ahead and have our award ceremony. And please, if you are placing in in the tournament or you're um, winning a prize, you we're going to be contacting you, and you have to be present. Okay, all for, we're going to have placards for everybody for every winner what they won. Uh, we're going to have a backdrop with native branding. We're going to have a native tent out there. I mean, everything is going to be all native out there. We want you to get you to get recognized for your win out there. So please make it out there. Then afterwards, um, we'll be on our way. Um, so one thing I didn't discuss that this format, it is no limit, but it also is Big Bass Power Hour. Um, make sure that when you take a picture of your fish, you take a picture of it immediately because how this works is if you're the tiebreaker is the first picture that was taken based on the timestamp. Okay. So uh, make sure that you take a picture of that fish as soon as you can, because that's your tiebreaker. Every nice. hour has a big fish. We have sponsors for every hour and yeah. So that's the complete format. Uh, can, no can... limit and big bass power hour. And we'll also have a prize boat for the total winner. Uh, the biggest fish for the tournament. And can, that, can, can somebody take a picture of their fish and then check and see that someone's already got a bigger one, submit it the next hour? No, no. It's all time stamp on the fish itself, okay? Okay, so and that we'll hour also, you catch it, you need to submit it in. Well, gotcha. you don't have to submit it in. You just got to submit it at the end of the uh, day. But um, oh, gotcha. the, the, the leaderboards for the big, big bass is hidden. So it's not like you're going to go ahead and just try to, you know, strategically try to post it up there. But it, everything is all time stamp. So that's why I'm okay. going to try, uh, give you a heads up. So Nice. And then if there's yeah. any new kayakers out there and this is your first event, like Vern, Richard, um, you could contact me or James or Marvin or any kayak guy, and, and we could help you out on how to measure the fish correctly. Oh, yeah. Making sure that you have your official uh, code with the official. Mm -hmm. is, are you going to have an official uh, tag, or well, you, can you put the code on your hand, or, or, or no? Or we'll have an official tag, tag, and I'll be showcase. Uh, I'll be uh, sharing that um, before the tournament. Um, if you don't have the t uh, a way to print out the tags, I'll have it at the the social gathering. Okay, and the night know, before. Um, come to the uh, social gathering because a lot of yeah, questions definitely. can be asked is over there, especially for the new guys. And, yes. Um, yep. I just confirmed that Greg's going to be out there. So if you want to guys want to meet Greg, um, he's going to be out there. Are these two guys down there? Hey. Right there. What's up, the, Sean? The SoCal What's Hammer. Man. What's up, Sean? Somebody <laughs> driving? Anthony, congratulations out there, driving. man. Top 10. That's amazing, bro. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're coming up, right, Anthony? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, Anthony has a title to defend. So, <laughs> yeah, yep. uh, right. Right, right, right. His dad's gonna take it from him this year, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it's gonna be exciting. And um, Anthony, where are you coming from? You got rods in your truck. Work, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you stay ready with rods in your truck, huh? Yeah, dude. There's a, a little low key like reservoir right next to my station that I can't name, but 
it has Look giant you. smallmouth and giant largemouth in it, so I try to hit it every chance I get. <laughs> he All just right. doesn't pack from Oklahoma yet. Yeah, okay. that's a true statement too. <laughs> Everything in there is from uh, Oklahoma. It's still there. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, I, um, it, so yeah, that that's the itinerary: social gathering at Clear Lake Outdoors, five to seven p.m. Uh, April fifth. Tournament day on April 6th and 415 is award ceremony at Kanaktai Vista Casino. If you guys have any questions, feel free to um holler at me. My contact information is on the registration page. You can go ahead and add me on Facebook, direct message me. Um, I'm you know, I, I treat my messages like email, so don't uh, I try to get you back as, as soon as possible, but I will answer, okay? And thank you, James and John. For helping so, me out yeah, with man. these questions one, one too, more thing, with Marvin. your platforms. Oh, okay. one more. One thing, motor or Marvin. two? One motor only, please. One motor. One motor okay. only. One motor, guys. I, yeah. I, is, I, it is, is it open Marvin. launch or is it like designated launch ramps? Designated launch ramps, and um, there's around a good, ten, I believe, ten launches over there. Um, you'll find that almost every launch is available out there. Um, only use the ones that's available on the registration page, please. So, so Marvin, on Turny X. When you go to the search bar, what do you put in there to search? Uh, type in native Clear Lake. That's the only one. The two Very keywords, good. I'll find it. Native Clear Lake. Wonderful. Yeah, I just did it under no limit and it popped right up for me too. So, okay. right, so turn right. the X and then yep. search and then yeah. no limit. Yep. Native, no so limit. We're, turn we're, X. Um, we're sitting pretty good right now with registration. We have around 71 anglers. Um, nice. We're trying to make this the biggest uh event out all right there. all right guys here let's 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 break this down all right tourney x tourney registration type in the search bar you go no limit native whatever you want to say right search right there boom register do it all right okay i'm i'm making sure i'm off on saturday next week i gotta double check that but i will be all right there. All right. Um, well, hey, I got to cut this short. I got to get back to yeah, man. Um, work right now. And, dude, Damien's here now. What's up, Damien? <laughs> What's up? Hey. What's up? All right. Let me take a screenshot over here because this is amazing, <laughs> man. Hey. <laughs> you, you four right. superstars here. All right. All right. Right, so right on, Mark. Go. Hey, I appreciate it, bud. Thanks for joining and giving us the uh, – the info on the native no limit big bass power outer guys get to clear lake and we're gonna hammer down on some big fish that's all i gotta say and thanks for having me guys you guys have a good one cheers hey you too all right, See you, you too man later marv. later marv peace hey sean are you what's still up driving fellas home? is sean still driving home from uh oh i got him home? muted hold on he was making too much noise in the background all right yeah he spent an extra day goofing off huh sean no, I went and fished fork and it was terrible. <laughs> I, no caught, good, like, huh? a, I caught like like the tiniest bass you could catch. It was terrible. It was prefrontal. Yeah. Yeah. You should have stayed at Tin Killer. You probably would have caught yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I had better practice at Tin Killer than I did tournament. <laughs> Man, we Damien and I talked about that on the way home. Like, I wish we had one more day to go out there and like hit the rest of the marinas and just put a, a beating on them. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, that, that was fun. All right, guys. So hey, this is it. Minus Kong uh, Kong Yang that uh, unfortunately couldn't make it tonight, but we are the five. John, sorry, John. Yeah. John didn't I'm, go. No. John's going next year with us though. We're all going next year. I better we're make qualify. Year. Yep, we're all going to qualify at Clear Lake in the end of June, and we're going to have top ten a giant caravan of California anglers to go out to Texas and put a beating on them boys like oh, uh, the two down there did. Yeah. That's right. California so guys, dominates. <laughs> uh, Sean, uh, let us know what you found out there. Um, What'd you get on? I, we, we all know it. Uh, tell us the juice that you found and how you did and, and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I really only threw like one bait all week and it was a, a rock crawler. <laughs> just a. How many different just, colors did you buy? Just, I mean, I bought a ton, but I really only used the, <laughs> the, the red bug and that watermelon, that phantom watermelon. 
That's all I found. Yeah. Every, everything else I was throwing, I was just catching white bass only, exclusively. And then that crankbait was the only bite that I found. So what were you that cranking? Was the only bite that found it. Uh, I was cranking uh, rocks and wood, mainly. Rocks and wood? On a steeper bank or yeah. flatter? Steep bank? Uh, it, it would kind of taper, it kind of tapered down to like five feet, and then it just kind of slowly went down, and they would just be sitting on that like five, six foot line for me. Okay. You had to ricochet the bait in order to get the trigger of the bite, or would they hit it? Long? Yeah, I would, I would. I would do like I would do like I'd be really really fast, hit a log, pause it, and they would just smoke it. Nice. Yeah, it was fun. Nice. Yeah, the practice was really good. Hooked out? Did you change the hooks no. up? Nope. I didn't. I mean, I didn't lose a single fish. Nope. I didn't lose a single fish except one during practice. Okay, so that tells everybody those hooks are good hooks then. Right yep. out of the package. I mean, Damien will take Sean. Off, but... Yeah. <laughs> that was the first thing you said to me. Did you change your hooks out? No, I forgot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, so, German Day, I just, I just have to, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of money for mine. Yep. Okay. Anthony. Yeah. I know you spent time all over the lake during practice you were you were up up the river you were main lake in the middle main lake in the south end i mean what 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 drew you to where you went the amount of fish that were down there dude honestly yeah i, mean, uh, the, I thought the the better size was up where sean was fishing um up near that river in the muddy water just because the water was so warm i felt like the bigger ones were kind of up there like right about to spawn if not spawning already um so the fish that i caught were like all over 17 but it was like three here two here three here it, it wasn't a i didn't think it was gonna be a, a good idea to go up there for the tournament and catch hundred of white bass a day too. Yeah, exactly. And that that too. There was so much bait and so many white bass up there. It wasn't even funny. Like it, you would have probably had to go through like fifteen white bass to get one largey. Yeah. What, what, what was your lure choice? I only caught I only caught crappie, so that was cool. I mean, I did catch some some drum on day two, and I think we all get in the drum. You're with the the right bass. So that was nice, but uh, I was glad to get away from all the white bass for sure. Yeah. So well, what was your weapon of choice? I know what it was. Um, what were you throwing, Anthony, mainly? Uh, mainly was a 2.8 Kitek on 6 and 8 pound test. There you go. 8, eight ounce ball head or quarter? Uh, I, was, I would start with a 316th. And as the sun got higher and it seemed like they got a little bit more finicky, I would switch over to the one eighth ounce. Um, I was throwing that uh, the Kitek uh, round ball jig head, that tungsten one. Uh, right. So it's, I mean, even though even you could go up to half ounce and it's still super small. Right. So then. So it was it was Tuesday night and it was how many ways could Anthony and I rig up the two point eight pretty much. <laughs> basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I think I, on day the start of day one, I had four rods rigged up with 2.8s on this. Wow. Yeah. So what, what were you fishing the structure? Uh, I was fishing uh, the the shallow docks and uh, the rock piles uh, in the creek arms of the docks. In the middle of the creek? Uh, no, not necessarily in the middle. Uh, it was more like on the edges of the creeks. Uh, okay. where it would go from like 25 to 30 feet i think uh I, i'm pretty sure i i mean i've i didn't really like look but i'm pretty sure all of my fish came within 20 to 25 feet of water um and then like some of them came suspended off of the docks but i think the better fish were the ones that were just outside of the docks so so on day one you had how many inches on day yeah, one, you had how many inches? Eighty-one. On day one, how many inches did you have? And then day two. Yeah, I had eighty-one. Eighty-one on day one. 
after losing one four pound smallmouth and a couple of four pound largies. And on day two, I ended with 91 inches. Okay, so then on day two, what, what was what was the biggest factor that made you get 10 more inches besides catching all the fish? You uh, find the it? fish were in that area. Uh, I think it was just me fishing. I wasn't fishing clean. So I think the opportunity was to get 90 and above was there on day one. I just messed up. I mean, there's not really anything I could say about that. The, the fish were there. It just uh human error basically uh but I, I i i knew i was i knew on day two i was gonna go out there and put up at least 90 inches i was telling the guys like i'm gonna go out there and i'm gonna put up 90 something inches and uh towards the end of the day he backed uh, it up <laughs> yeah. he did. Uh, oh we lost him with the plan saying that i was gonna go to the, the creek hit the rock piles hit the docks and get a decent limit. And then I was gonna go towards the main lake looking for more rock piles and more. I mean, if you found, I was gonna go look for bait basically. If I could find the bait, I knew I was gonna get a decent bag and. That had fish on them, duck those. And then I, I caught a smallmouth in like 18 feet of water. And I just happened to look over with live scope and I saw this giant bait ball that I, I didn't even know I was fishing. And then I, that's where I, uh, that's where I had caught the smallmouth out of. And then after that, it was just the last three hours of the tournament. I caught like 30 fish. Uh, wow. It was just insane. Nice. That feels good. Well, huh? Sean, yeah. Sean, what are you, what'd you have on day one? Who's you guys? I think Go I had like now. 83 and a half. 83 and a half, right? And then struggle a little bit on day two. And uh, you guys yeah, they were all just small. Yeah, they were all small. Hello. Hello. Yeah. We hear we you. We got you, Anthony. So, yeah, Sh Sean, Sean's bite kind of – he did what I did on the, the end of day one, but he did it on day two. He left his, his good fish to go find fish. I left my good fish to go chase an afternoon bite at the end of day one. And that was uh, my demise, I think. That kept that stupid little 12 and three quarter in my bag. Um, but uh, yeah, Damien pretty much told me at the end of day one, couldn't believe I left and tomorrow you better not do it. <laughs> the whole time I thought about leaving when they weren't, <laughs> the whole time I thought, about, I thought about leaving, I was like, nope. Damien's going to be pissed if I leave, and it actually paid off. I caught it that 19 three-quarter with, like, an hour to go. There you go. So, you know, yeah, it, 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 it paid that's off. Not, that's not, you know, the only fish to find fish if you're around the right ones. It's just a bite yep. that has to open up they start being because they're definitely oh, out there, you know. There's man, so I, I, I sat there for hours at the end of day <laughs> one without a bite. I'm like, oh, my God, it's 1230. I don't have – I got 12 and three quarter. I'm gonna go chase that afternoon bite we found, and that that definitely did not materialize for me. <laughs> oh man, Damien, he saw me at the end of the day. I look at he looks at me. You know, I gave him a thumbs up. And he's like, "Yep, I got my five. You got it. You got the right five. So, so Damien, what'd you do? We, how'd you do it? <laughs> Oh, you mean practice wise or just uh, yeah, start just with break the it down. Mm -hmm. right. Damien and I practice yeah. together. You guys know me and James. We travel to Oklahoma together. We carpooled. You know, James drove us all the way there. You know, he didn't let me drive there, so uh, he stayed up <laughs> all night driving. <laughs> but uh, you know, we, we got hey, you there saved and, me on the way home, though. I don't know, man. I almost got us killed, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I told you I don't I didn't I didn't I, didn't, I don't like driving the snow, man. I, I, that, that snow kind of freaked me out right there. <laughs> I said, "Wake me up!" I heard Jared talking to John. Oh, it's snowing like crazy. I woke up from a dead sleep. I told you, I John. <laughs> oh yeah. man, so. <laughs> Yeah, practice was really good. I mean, uh, you know, we get to the boat launch, you know, you, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I get out there. Since I get there, I, I run into the channel, and 
you know, I throw my uh, my four facing sonar on, and I, I see fish in the channels. You know, first drop, I catch one on the Sakamata shad, and just uh, been trolling, but just dropping straight down on them. Uh, and how they react to the bait is very different from how it is from our local lakes. You know, our local lakes, it takes a longer time to get these fish to eat. Uh, it seems like these fish, when they seen it, they eat, they eat it right away. And uh, it, it didn't matter where we went. It, it seems to be there was a lot of, it was a good abundance of quality fish as in like 15 to 17, 18 fish went on our first day of practice. And uh, it didn't really seem what to matter what you threw. They were biting, you know, we thought the fish were going to be back in the coast spawning because the water temp was probably going to be higher. But uh, water temp for us, I believe it was like 50 to 53 first thing in the morning. Yep. And then, uh, you know, um, you know, and, and they were just everywhere. They're around docks. They're in the marinas. A lot of these uh, lakes, a lot of these areas had a lot of man-made structures like uh, they'd have cables with brush piles attached to them, and uh, these were holding a lot of fish. Uh, it wasn't just like one or two fish. It was a good school of maybe 10, 15 fish under them, and each each one of these brush piles had that many fish under them. And, uh, yeah, it was just a catch back to back. It didn't matter what you threw at them. You threw a big glide bait. You still catch the same size fish, so uh, it, it was kind of... Um, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to do something different because uh, you're still gonna catch the same size fish. So uh, I play the numbers game, and uh, you know uh, I, I went all over uh, and you know went back in the dirtier creeks, warmer water temperature, through spinner bait, still caught the same size fish, a lot of fish, uh, you know related to bait. Uh, from what I've seen is that a lot of the fish uh, that I was trying to target is. They, they were not interested in spawning. They seemed like they were just fish that just lived out there on the bait. Uh, they they didn't plan on moving up shallow. You caught one, you looked at the fish. Uh, they were fat, but they weren't full of eggs. They were just gorging with uh, bait. That's what it was. And, uh, so, you know. funny story. Damien says they're biting anything. I throw a little 3 8 Kitek into the school of fish, and I'm, I'm fishing it in. I'm not getting bit. Here comes Damien's bomb as a rig, like five feet away from where my bait landed. I swear to God, that fish jumped out of the water and ate that thing before it hit the water. I'm like, dude, how does he do this? Like, this is just stupid. <laughs> it, that lake was just so, there's still, yeah. just so much fish. It was, it was, pretty it was insane. so it's just, funny. It, it reminds me of just like Barry said, when you're around the fish, schools of fish, it, it, and it, it felt like when the bait was falling through the fish, uh, it was bouncing off their heads. It seemed like how many there was. Yeah. Uh, it, it was kind of unreal. Yeah, you'd, you'd bring a bait through that school, like you'd feel it bumping something. You know, whether, <laughs> it's same thing with the, I mean, when, when we were around the bait in practice, man, when we're throwing the spoon, you'd bring that floater spoon back up, there'd be like two or three thread fin shad stuck all over the hooks. And wow. I mean, it was crazy. That lake was alive, man. It had a lot yeah. of good life in it. It, it so was a Damien, beautiful lake. Yeah. What, what was your uh, lure choice, and then what was what were you targeting to get all so, the bikes? So, uh, so on tournament day, right, um, I was throwing a flutter spoon. Uh, I was throwing both a flutter spoon and a jigging spoon. Jigging spoon was one of the things that I threw to get a limit because uh, it was a dual reality jigging spoon, and uh, I believe it was a uh, two ounce. Uh, that thing sank really fast. It triggered these fish real quick. Uh, you know, I sacked a quick limit on it real fast of spotted bass. And then, uh, really, my probably my go-to was probably uh, probably the jackal counterback. That's the one that did all the damage for me, really, uh, on tournament day. But but practice day, um, you know, I threw that the big six and a half inch and eight inch mag, and uh, that really t told me what I need to be doing because uh, there was a couple times where I dropped that magnum spoon down there and. Uh, the way how the fish reacted to it, it seemed like they they were not uh, like they didn't see it very like it's new to them and how they're acting is a lot of times I, I had dropped it down to them and I would even move the rod tip and you can see on live scope these fish are just running into it and uh, they just seem to be more and more interested into it. You didn't have to move the spoon and they were running into it and uh, that kind of told me if I if I had a smaller spoon I'd hook up instantly so. Uh, you know, just did that flip spoons around the marinas look for these brush piles that they're tying up uh, uh, to the to the cables and stuff. A lot of these big fish are just relating to the cables and the brush piles and these fish that were out here were not really relating to uh, bait. They were more relating to the crappies on those brush piles. So if the bait had left, I, I felt like these fish were still hanging around and they, they kind of did. So then yeah. how, many fish, how many fish did you go through each day? Oh gosh, it was. There's some moments I'd went and catch like 
about 15, 20 fish every cast. It was uh, pretty insane. Uh, you know, you, you catch them quite a bit, and then after a while, you change your, your bait up a bit. You change to a different size spoon or a different color. You get bit again, and it starts them up again. And it, was, it was pretty unreal. Well, then it was uh, uh, it was a fun yeah. experience, guys. This is my my first time going out of California fishing um, for bass. It is, and man, the I, I had some comments and some stuff saying, you know, that the Bassmaster guys they forget about us out west, and you know, blah blah blah. Guys, Steve Owens has not forgotten about us out here. Um, he genuinely cares about us fishing out this way. Um, so don't don't get that perception that that we're just on a lonely island out here because we're not. Right, we got our chance to qualify at the end, end of uh, June at Clear Lake, and uh, they're gonna do everything they can to help get us to be able to go fish on that national stage. Yeah, so don't don't think that 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 is reality because uh, they want us there. They were super grateful. I mean, I think. Guys came down from Canada and they had like a 20 hour drive, and we still had a longer drive than that. So, wow. when we show up, dude, it's not unnoticed for us West Coast guys to, to show up out there. So, it was pretty cool. So, James, how'd you catch your fish? Um, I caught 95% of them on a 2.8 Kai Tech on a dirty jigs, quarter ounce guppy head. See, for me, where I was at, they, I tried throwing an eighth ounce to keep it up out of the rocks and the shallower water that. When I was fishing the shallowers, but they they wanted that 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 head just grinding on the bottom, shoot just slow enough to where you didn't get stuck, but almost too slow where you got it snagged every single cast. And uh, you know, I broke off a 17-ish or so smallie on day two. I broke off, I, dude. It's been a long time since I broke off the fish. I broke off three of them, two of them on, on the on the on the hook set, and one that. I don't know. I can't explain it. But uh, my big fish did come on a rock crawler. And one of my other fish did come on a rock crawler on day two. Kind of. There was a back of a cut creek arm that we found. There was a point that was in the middle. And you had an arm that went right and the arm that went straight. Well, in the back of the arm that went straight, there was three separate pockets that were loaded with bait. When I think myself, Anthony, and Damien all went back there on Sunday for practice. And every single one of those arm, those those coves in the back of that arm had bait. And I show up Wednesday morning, the bait's gone. So I was just fishing the points in that in that 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 creek arm. And I got my bites. But the, the rock crawler, in order to get bit on that thing, man, I had to either have a lot of wind or I had to to really try to trigger the fish to bite because they they did not want to eat a crank at all but uh, they stopped eating what i was throwing at them and i rotated through a ton of baits so i just kept on throwing that that crankbait right in their face and smashing in the little rock ledge they were on until one of them got pissed off and ate it well, i got another question with uh there was a how many angler a anglers fish that what was it like 164 right? yeah 164. 164. so 164 anglers on 10 killer did uh was it crowded for you guys or i mean was it were the anglers giving you a lot of room or, or what I was think the we're deal? used to it we're used to it a lot of guys <laughs> didn't like a lot of guys didn't like it i okay. had one guy in my creek arm that i was in a day i had more boat pressure than i did kayak pressure where i was at Okay. Did, did the boaters kind of like give you enough room? They they were aware, right, what was going on? The one guy was, and then one guy wanted to troll right over the top of the point I was fishing, and it was only 10 feet deep. Okay. So cool. I, I had to kindly ask that, that gentleman to not troll over the top of that point. And, and But, yeah, no. Sean, what were you saying? Oh, I was saying a lot of the guys said it. They wanted something way bigger than what we were fishing. Okay. Yeah, they they thought it was way too small. But I, like I said, we're used to pressure with a ton of anglers oh, yeah. on the water. With the bass. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so it's, I had yeah. like twelve guys at my launch both days. Oh boy. Twelve other boats. I mean, we had we had a lot, a lot of our launch that Damien and I went to. 
but they were it was a big enough area unless did they really congested down there by the ramp damien no it's actually really nice um yeah you know i i want to say that's this lake is really big and the thing is that you know it did not feel crowded because there's so much structure if you're fishing trees offshore there's so much trees you can be literally next to somebody and they could be fishing a tree you know i mean it it did not feel crowded at all i mean day one for me where i was at i was in the marina i didn't see any boats in the marina especially me but day two i think there's a two or three more attacks that showed up but uh i, I didn't feel like i, I was uh, being crowded or anything because you know, the, the fish that I'm targeting is going to be a fish that a lot of people cannot get to. So uh, it did not bother yeah. me or anything, you know. And, and, you know, you know, if you go around, you see somebody in a cut, you know, there's another cut right next to that cut. So it's it's not like uh, you were fishing with a big bowl. There's a lot of areas, a lot of <clears throat> structure you can sit on. Um, it, it felt really big. Uh, Damien you know, was fishing for Damien fish. <laughs> Only he could get them. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, you were down south a little bit further than we were. How how busy was your ramp? I mean, the ramp was pretty busy, but uh, like it was like Damien was saying, like they everybody kind of like dispersed, and even though you were near people, you weren't really near people. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. I think day one, there was probably like fifteen or sixteen people down at my ramp, and then uh, and they just I don't even know where most of them went, honestly. Because I, I think I only saw like two people throughout the whole day, and we were still like a quarter mile apart from each other. Um, but yeah, no, I was doing, I mean, not nobody was really live scoping the docks, which was surprising me. I mean, Damien was, and that was about it. That's all I know. I mean, it was crazy. These people were, even in practice, I would check like the mid lake docks. I think the last day of practice, I went and checked the mid lake docks, and there was a bunch of people that were fishing outside and like, casting down the lanes but nobody was actually like flipping and like not not bouncing i didn't bounce off of any docks but maybe i did but the boats no docks but boats yeah but i mean like seriously nobody was like getting at those fish that are were under suspended under under the, the docks. all those docks yeah. yeah it was it was it was mind-boggling out so i was just like these people were fishing like maybe 50 yards out from the docks and they would leave and i would go in there and stick a fish right after them and then on day two, it was even less people. I mean, I think only four or five people ended up launching down at that dock. And I think a lot of those people probably didn't catch fish on day one, so I get it. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, I liked it. It was a, it was, it was an enormous slate compared to what we fish most of the time. Yeah. Uh, and even it with like, all uh, 164 people, it didn't feel crowded at all. Well, that's no, good. like when when you look at it on the map and you start doing google earth and you're like oh it's only a mile from here to here it's only a couple of miles from here to here but those creek arms are forever long and you get lost in them you know and it's like we've damien and i thought we can cover a huge section of that southern part of the lake on saturday and it was like dude you just got lost in where you went you know i got my graph shut off middle of the day on saturday so i cut my first day of practice short i had to go figure out why i lost power to it um and Damien put on, like, he has all smiles when he came back, dude. I was like, man, I missed out on a hell of a day, didn't I? He's like, yes, you I, did. I see you on the bank, and I was like, what are you doing? Dude, the fish are so good, man. They're everywhere. It just, it yeah. was... I had, dude, I had my trolling motor torn off of it. I had everything ripped out of the front hatch. And, like, he's like, dude, you all right? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm pretty pissed off right now. He just drove 1,600 miles to fish half a day. I have so, a broken so... uh, connector. So the uh, even though there is a lot of people <clears throat> launching in the same area, even if you were fishing like in the same cove or the same area, there was so much structure that you basically oh, yeah. had an area to yourself. Or when that we went, to yourself. When we launched the ramp we were at, if you went to the left and there was that probably a half mile stretch, Damien, out yeah. to Main Lake, or even longer than that, and there was thousands of trees in there. Anywhere from topped out, you know, in 20 feet of water over, you know, they're down in 40 feet all the way up to like the 15 foot mark. There was trees everywhere on both sides of the bank. The main channel, every cut had trees down there. I got lost in them one day and I, I gave up on it. I said, there's too many damn trees and I couldn't get them to bite. So I, you know, and, when I took off on day one too, man, I looked behind me. I was like, man, I can slow way down. Hey, nobody back there. I was like, holy crap. Like. I thought for sure somebody's gonna be back there fishing the creek with me. 
the thing about this this lake is that uh you know there's a lot of structure and the thing is that uh even if you're around somebody and if you're not around the fish these fish are going to travel very far to eat your bait if your bait mm -hmm. if you throw an a rig and it's about 30 feet you keep your bait in about 10 15 feet that fish is going to swim off the bottom come all the way up to hit it so if he's within 15 or 20 feet away from that bait wow. he's willing to travel that distance to eat that a rig so wow. that's one thing even if you're not around like the juice or uh not around the really prime spot uh, these fish are willing to commit to that run to chase after your bait. And when they do get that close, uh, they they do commit. So it's it's not like they fall all the way back and turn around. Once they get close to your bait, they're going to eat it. Yeah. So, yeah, so once, then once the water was moving. pretty clear. The yeah, water, water, what, what we fish, we fish the southern end, which is a lot more clearer. Uh, I believe Sean fished more of the central se section, which has a little bit more uh, color to it. Okay. Yeah, we had... I think like nine, nine, almost ten feet of visibility when the wind was calm. Wow, where we were at, yeah. Yeah, that's was, for us. For us, seeing in the water now, the fish, the even see even further. Plus, their oh, lateral yeah. line, they can feel everything. Yeah, and they know what's going on around them. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's cool. That the fish would actually, you would see the fish come from deep water and come up and just smash the the a rig. Yeah, you won't see him. You won't see the fish on live scope. But if you keep your bait high in the water column, that fish will just come off the ground and chase it. Just shoot up and just and yeah, just, just shoot straight just up. Commit. James just knows right on that point. Yeah, James not a were good they? Were they? The same way. Were the, uh, Damien was in the marina. We were we were fishing it one day, and those smallies were out in the main channel on the trees. I think is what we were thinking, and it was over. 40 feet of water in that one corner and they would come up and they just start smoking the bait that was up underneath the, uh, the marina right subsurface. And, uh, it was cool. I mean, I had the flutter spoon in there and I saw just a mark shoot up in the middle of nowhere th up through my graph. And I ripped that flutter spoon once through the bait ball. And that was the only thing in front of that small mouth. They just crushed it. I mean, they, they didn't think twice about it. So once they committed, they didn't they didn't stop and say nah. They just ate no. it, huh? No. Yeah. There, there was a couple times where I reeled the spoon out of the water, and my bait's a little out of the water, and a fish will come rushing, jumping up, and and try to hit my spoon as it's out on, out of the water, and I drop <laughs> it back down and catch that fish. Nice. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty insane. I I, I really enjoyed it out there. It's fun. But Damien's the fish whisperer, and only he can do stuff like that because. <laughs> I sure sure it happened to me. <laughs> so, um, oh man, so bottom bouncing baits like a jig, or or let's say a drop shot or something that's on the bottom really didn't work too well. I I did. And then I couldn't get bit on a jig. The only jig fish I caught it swiped at it, and that was during practice. Um, drop shot I caught a caught a couple during practice, but. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, they I, but that the the two point eight I had to creep it on the bottom. It said super slow, and that's that's how they wanted that. They didn't want it up suspended for whatever reason. I'm I'm sure the bigger bait, you know, and each of the like for me was fish a little different too. Like down where I was at, they wouldn't touch the a rig, and back kind of where Damien was at, you know, we'd get an a rig fish a day or two back in that area. But it was it's kind of weird how. Each part of the lake kind of fished somewhat different for me, at least that was. So, Anthony, were you working your bait off the bottom as well? Um, yeah. I mean, I was target. I mean, basically, I wasn't like Damien was saying that you weren't able to really see the fish, um, other than the fish that were suspended under the docks. I mean, those would they they'd eat your bait before it even hit the floor. They would follow it straight down. And you would just pick reel in your slack and you would feel that weight. Um, but when I was targeting like those rock piles or the bases of the trees, I would just cast at the base of it and just start working the bait. And eventually you would feel that either that tick or that heavy pressure and set the mm -hmm. hook and the fish is on. Wow. Yeah, a lot of the bites were super subtle. I noticed, especially the ones in the rocks, they just, it'd get mushy and like, oh, there we go. We're on again. Mm -hmm. And then on the spoon, the spoon, Damien, were they crushing it? Oh yeah, they were crushing it. And if they <laughs> saw it, and if they they had to touch it, it was a 
You know, yeah, like no, I but... let the spoon sink all the way down to the bottom, and then it'd be sink all the way to fifty feet. They chase it all the way from from right into the dock all the way down to fifty feet and pick it up off the ground. They wow. unless they committed to chasing it, they weren't gonna let it get away. They they weren't gonna stop. No, they had never weren't. seen that thing before. I don't think so. <laughs> no, man. Right? The way how they react to it, it was <laughs> insane. Yeah, that's nice. There's nothing better than uh, a good spoon bite, I think. I know, right? It, and it, and it's right? back to back. It, it's just yeah, once oh, yeah. one Every, gets it, yeah. he doesn't get it. His buddy's gonna get it right then. <laughs> right. It was just if, if, insane. If you guys have not looked at Damien's fish submissions, go on to Turny X, look on day two, and look at the mess of spoons he's got on his deck. He wasn't high <laughs> enough in day two. He was like, "I dare you to join me and do this with me because you ain't gonna do it." <laughs> They, they tried. They tried. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all those people I mean, right on the second day. Yeah. So they all kind of caught on. Huh? <laughs> I seen a couple guys with spoons, uh, but yeah. I, I wasn't worried because of the the type of spoons really matter too, and the reaction, the action of them, and how far you can get with them uh, depends on what brand you're throwing. You know, like the jackal, man, that thing can really swim far back under to those docks and uh, really draw those. So ex explain it's, explain that part. A lot of people so, might not know what that. Means. So, uh, uh, so on these docks, these marinas, right? They they have a, a walking platform in the dead center of it, and this it's a it, it's like a T, and there's like slips coming out, and the, in those slips there's pontoon boats, you know, uh, you know, jet skis and stuff like that, and that proof and. Uh, what they do is they tie cables and brush piles to the center of that. So that's way tucked back in there. Uh, it's hard to skip a Senko or whatever because there's just so many stuff in the way, like ropes, cables. But uh, what you do is you get a spoon, uh, you flip it into, flip it under, and you give it a slight little pop so you can get it to angle right. And then you start feeding it a lot of line. Make sure you don't keep any pressure on it. And that will allow the spoon to uh, shimmy or flutter to the very back or the base of that. So you're going to get that bait to in areas where people can't get their spoons to or any kind of bait too so if these fish are back there they haven't seen a bay at all other than the locals coming in and dropping minnows down on them but uh you know you're gonna get to these fish and they haven't seen it and then all of a sudden you know all the fish around are interested in what's going on you're gonna keep popping it right under them and it'll just draw all these fish a lot of these fish were just staging on these cables and just hanging around the cables you know i did lose a bunch of spoons but uh you know just keep flipping it you know let anything walk uh glide all the way back to them work it over there keep Keep running all these other brush piles and stuff and uh yeah it, it was uh it's a pretty pretty nice way to catch them uh once you start catching one or two you start pulling the schools off of those brush piles so they're closer to the edge and they'll be right under the pontoon boat so you can catch them all easier so you don't have to fight them over the the crossbars and all the <clears> cables <throat> and stuff so uh yeah just flipping the spoon getting that thing to walk uh a guide all the way to back to them uh it, it's a killer technique but uh you know really Playing with different types of spoons uh, really uh, helps a lot. You know, uh, definitely the the Jackal is a really good one to throw. Uh, you know, Bass Pro Shop ones are really good. Um, and then Nichols is the one I threw a lot too. That's a pretty big spoon that got bit a lot. It, that thing thumps really hard and shoots really far back there with all that weight. So uh, it, really, it really depends on what kind of spoons you throw, you know. Uh, but that was those are the ones that were really working well for me. The, the Jackal, yes, you don't. It, the jackal, do has, the, the jackal has it's thicker, heavier, yes. and a, a little bit smaller than the 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 bigger, like the uh, Bass Pro ones. They're thinner, and they're yes. not as concave. So, right. so that that Bass Pro one flutters a little slower, where the jackal it actually goes so fast it actually triggers the bite as as well as a dual realis. It's so it's so fast when it drops the fish can't stand it they just they eat it Especially so 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 what the with the jackal I have been experiencing for quite a while is with the jackal spoon it's it's a very unique spoon and stuff like I tell everybody that I've talked to about with the spoon uh, it feels like a uh, the best way to say it, it feels like a big spoon but also mixed with a finesse spoon you get the best of both worlds it's action it doesn't it doesn't thump a lot. It's action. It's just a shimmy action. So it doesn't have that uh, where it's gonna it, where it's gonna you know shoot off a screen if you're scoping. You know, because a spoon will, will will flutter and then it'll stop and it'll change its course. Right. 
that's right. what the a, a red, like a regular spoon would do. This one doesn't do that. It shoots straight and it stays true to the action all the way down. It doesn't shoot off course. And I know a lot that may be bad in a lot of cases, but some cases it may outperform other spoons. Right, it just depends on what the fish want. But uh, yeah. yeah, just letting that spoon shimmy slowly through them. It looks like a senko right. almost when you're looking at it closely. Uh, but uh, and it moves fast. It's a very good spoon to scope with because it doesn't get off screen when you're looking at it. Now, did you add any stinger hooks to that, or you just get it out of the package? I did. I did add stinger hooks. Uh, you know, I and I had all sorts of kind of spoons on deck on tournament day, uh, and some with stingers, some without stingers, some with feather trailers, uh, troubles, some without feathers. Uh, you know, I found on tournament day the feather trail the feather trailers didn't work as good as uh, without feathers, uh, but uh, and they and they they just wanted to see the flash, and that's all it was. And uh, you know. The stinger hook did help a lot of times, but at the same time, they're eating it so good that you, it didn't you, matter. you <laughs> yeah, chewing it. Hey, right. hey, hey, don't don't do this technique unless you you're ready for it or you're ready to lose a lot of spoons. Because <laughs> first thing Damien asked me at the end of day one is, "Dude, can we go to Bass Pro?" And it was an hour drive. I said, <laughs> "Let's go." <laughs> I know. I, We're going. <laughs> I needed more line. I needed more spoons. I needed more everything. It just yeah. I usually spoon with fifteen pound, uh, tactical, but I had to go with twenty pound because of all the cables and all the crossbars. Different from our boat launch, our, our our marinas here. Our marinas here are more like uh, flexible marinas, and they're not all held together tightly like that. They're not all one solid piece, so uh, they're not. Uh, there's not a lot of you know metal pieces down there. But this these stocks yeah. and marinas, there's a lot of stuff under them. So, yeah, man. I mean, guys, Anthony, you ready to do it again next year? Hell yeah. <laughs> Sean? Absolutely, dude. Yeah. We're going to load that stage. Damien's got the nickname of stage from old Steve-O. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only guy to make it twice um, so far. One, um, one more question. What, what was up, each one of you? Which, what was the highlight of your week? I mean, for me, it was, I mean, honestly, like, it, it, it came by and ended so quick, man. But I'd say the highlight was going to the expo, was going to the, the stage and seeing these two clowns up there. <laughs> Anthony's big old bright and pearly whites smiling yeah, like crazy. Smile, right? <laughs> Million dollar smile, you know, and, and just be able to share that with Damien. Um, and man, dude, I, I don't know if I could retain all the crap that Damien was 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 telling me while I was back there because he sure did give up a lot of juice to me. But uh, you know, I, I think we had great camaraderie, and I think that part really brought it all together. You know, the four of us heading down to the expo together and, and just get to share all that with these two guys was was pretty sweet. Hey, when you were walking at the expo, were guys going, like, hey, that's those California guys. Watch them. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? No. They were you like, know, yeah. the, the, the one thing I enjoyed, probably, you know, of course, being on the Mass Master Class stage is, it was one of the main things that I really enjoyed. But, you know, the, the, at the last day where we got to all hang out in the car, finally drive somewhere in the car together, because, you know, all the time we were up there is, we, we were separate cars. It's every day you get off the water, you're rigging up, you're changing baits, you know, just get to sleep early. You don't get to hang out much. But the last day when everything's finally done, right, and, and you're hanging out in the house and you're going somewhere to eat or after the expo, you know, you're just hanging out, just joking around, just clowning at each other and doing some funny stuff. That, that was the main highlight for me. You know, <laughs> yeah. just, all the when hanging Sean, out, you know. When Sean almost drove off the road and killed us all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was late. Yeah. We got off the highway. Good. I'm, I'm I, I, I just look at I'm on the passenger seat, so I look at the side and we're literally off. I was like, yo <laughs> Sean, are you awake? We're all alive. We're all alive. Hey, hey, what, what, we what Damien will tell you what Damien won't tell you is uh we went a little sideways in the snow twice on the way home. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I went through the blizzard I went through a blizzard too after Albuquerque. Uh, Man. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we it, dude, it totally totally unforgettable timing trip, man. It was it was one of those where the fishing was good, but dude, I, I we ain't gonna forget this anytime soon. Anthony, boy, Anthony, 
about caught up to us on the drive out there. Old Iron Man just hammering I down. Tried, dude. I tried my <laughs> ass off to catch up to you guys. <laughs> yeah. That snow and Flagstaff got you. Yeah. Yeah, that freaking blizzard I got stuck in or slowed me down. <laughs> yeah. So Anthony, what was your highlight of the week? Um, I mean, it was the whole trip, like everybody's saying, it was freaking awesome. Uh, from I mean, staying in a house with a bunch of hammers and sharing fishing techniques with the freaking king himself over there, Damien. Yeah. And uh, and uh, but no, I mean, the the thing that I think stood out the most was probably day two, like that last three hours when I when I was like really close to like catching up to Damien, Guillermo, and freaking uh, Drew. I mean, I ah. It was crazy. I mean, I was like a few fish away from just totally messing up that top five. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, in, when I post a video, I don't know if I'm going to leave all the screaming in there, but there's a lot of screaming going on <laughs> when, I was nice. catching those, when I was catching those fish towards the end of the day. I mean, because it was legit like, oh, man, I needed like two more 19s or two more 20s, and it would have been crazy. Dude, I, you know, there was – we'd be sitting in the house and – I can't, I can't tell you how much, like, oh, have you guys seen this bait? Have you seen – I mean, there's so much little, like, juice. Like, if we had a camera on us, like, during the, the whole time in the house, it'd be it'd be stupid because there was, like, Anthony's got his little secret box over there, and then Damien's all rigging up in the laundry room at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Dude, I'm not trying to hide anything from anybody, but we were all you know, half asleep, and it was it, – dude, it was way too much fun. Yeah, I was freaking sick. Well, John, what was your highlight? Oh, Almost we got, killing everybody. Like saying, there's a, we got a lot of juice. We got a lot of juice. Damien is not afraid to talk fishing <laughs> and help you out with techniques and give you tips. And it's, it's nice getting to learn from guys who are little little hammers on the water. Yep. So the yeah, other dude, highlight... It, the other highlight, Shane or Sean, would be uh, you driving off the road or what? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I fished clean the whole week. It was pretty great. I didn't lose it. Uh, yeah. I didn't lose it to the tournament. Boat flip That's most good. of them. So that was a good time. Yeah, if I fish clean, I'm I'm ecstatic. I'm always happy. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the worst worst execution on my behalf in a long time. But same. That's fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, after your day one. Yeah. No. It was. It was great, guys. Hey, we're gonna probably wrap this thing up. It's getting late, so. Yeah, guys, coming, guys. Um. So check it out. Damien's got his uh, day one practice day video out. If you have not seen his day one practice and my self over there in the background laughing at him because he's catching all the fish and I can't catch anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> check out his, his YouTube channel, Damien. What is your YouTube? It's just Damien Tao, right? Damien Tao, yeah. Damien Tao. You know, I mean, dude, he and, he and he does a great job explaining why we went to where we went and what we were looking for. Um, Anthony, you're going to get a video up probably end of the week, maybe? I'm, I'm hoping for the end of the I'm hoping for the end of the week. It's just works I mean, I came back and went straight to work, so it's kind of hard to do yeah. it. I'm going to try to crank out some editing tonight and uh, see what I can do. But, yeah, I'm hoping for Friday afternoon to get it posted. Guys, G Team Outdoors, Anthony. Um, I'm going to probably put out my two Tolik videos, my practice and my tournament day. I'm hoping to get those done this week. So next week I'll start putting out content from uh, the Oklahoma trip. Um, I said I just went back to work today and did a 12-hour day, so it's kind of hard to edit. And then we're doing this. So, uh, Sean, uh, Sean Beach Fishing on YouTube, right? Yep. Yep. He's not home yet, so he'll get some content out when he gets home, I'm sure. Um, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, yeah, guys, just, just keep an eye out for that. You know, if you haven't subscribed to their channels or, you know, do it. I'm sure you all have. Um and we're going to see each other again uh, on the 6th up at Clear Lake. So I can't wait for that. Yeah, that's going to be fun. And uh, compete against these sticks again. And then Johnny fishes a lot. Hopefully he uses all of his mojo out in the water fun fishing, <laughs> not tournament day. 
Um, but yeah, guys, if if you want to get qualified and do this, I highly recommend if you do get qualified, do this because you won't regret it. It's Clear Lake, June 29th. The bass, CA bass open. That is R1 and only shot to do it. Let's shoot for 200 anglers. Let's get top 10% of that field. Let's get 20 of us all back there and let's wreak some havoc in Texas. Because it is in Texas, they just don't know where yet. Um, and guys, it's a might even be a sh- shorter drive than what we just had. So, best time now, right? We're not driving back to Tennessee like Damien did last year, where it was three days of travel. Um, so, that's all I got, guys. Don't forget, Headwaters Rancho Cordova is now open. It is open, grand opening April 13th. Uh, some in store deals that you can only get there in Rancho. It's the old California canoe and kayak, so it's off of 50. Um, it's not off of 50. It's off of Folsom Boulevard on the south side of 50, down there by the big gymnastics place, I think. I don't remember the address. I will get it, and I'll let you guys know next week. Reading this week, next weekend. So after Clear Lake, go to Reading, 6th and 7th, Sportsman's Expo. Headwaters will be there. Um other than that, guys, I appreciate you coming on. Don't forget about Native Next on the April 6th. All your rules and the times and everything is all on your tourney X. Marv said he's not swaying from that. So that's awesome. Congrats to you two fellas. Yeah, way to It was represent. awesome seeing that. Um, yeah, congratulations. Thank you, guys. You guys, you guys worked hard at it. I know. Anthony, I had some work to do on day two, and well, Mr. G team did it. You know, he uh, he put it. He was he was bound and determined on day two. Unfortunately, I just couldn't find the fish, but uh, that's the way it goes. And um, we'll catch you guys all next week, same time, same place. And we're gonna have on Pua and Bam. So winner of Gambler Party. And the winner of Folsom last weekend. That's going to be with us next week. We'll have Shane Jones back again, um, co-hosting. So, guys, thank you. And we'll catch you all later. Yeah, thanks, fellas. Thanks for watching.